Hello everybody, welcome back to Imagine Your Art. Um, my name is Shannon and I'm from the Fairfield County District Library and we are doing another art project for the summer. Today's artist is Vasily Kandinsky. He was born in 1866 and he lived until 1944. So he was a Russian painter and he's generally thought of as the pioneer of abstract art. So we'll talk a little bit about abstract art and how that's different from some of the other things um, you see on museum walls. Um, it's believed that he also had something called synthesia. Did I get one right? Synthesia, it's a hard word. Uh, and any rate, that means that one sense, you know, the five senses, sight, feeling, smell, etc. One sense will trigger another sense, which is kind of interesting. He was thought to have had this, so he was thought to be able to uh, see colors when he heard music. So with synthesia, synthesia, tricky. Um, you can hear colors, for example, or see music, or taste words, or smell numbers. So it's an interesting mix of uh, your senses, and that's something they thought Kandinsky had. So we're going to take a look at one of the books about him. This is called The Noisy Paint Box, and it's by Barb Rosenstock, and the pictures are by Mary Grimpe, and it talks a little bit about how this works for Kandinsky. So Kandinsky is able to see wild shapes and colors in his mind whenever he hears music. And that's kind of what his art is all about. So here he is. They call him Baja. Baja Kandinsky spent his days learning to be a proper Russian boy. He studied bookfuls book of math, science, and history. He practiced piano scales to the marching click of the metronome. He sat stiff and straight at dressed up dinners while the grown-ups talked and talked and talked and talked. Baja's well-off world was perfectly polite until the day his aunt gave him a small wooden paint box. Every proper Russian boy should appreciate art, said Auntie. She showed Baja the correct way to mix colors on the paint box palette. Baja mixed red with yellow, then he mixed red with blue. As the colors changed, Baja heard a whisper, hiss, louder, hiss, then louder still, hiss. What's that sound, asked Baja. I don't hear a thing, said Auntie. Baja listened as his brush stirred and swished. The swirling colors trilled like an orchestra tuning up for a magical symphony. Mama, Papa, called Baja. What a noisy paint box. Silly, but silly, said Papa. Stop being foolish, said Mama. Baja painted the sounds of the colors. He spun a bright lemon circle onto the canvas. It clinked like the highest notes on the keyboard. He brushed a powerful navy rectangle that vibrated deeply like the lowest cello strings. He tossed up a jagged swatch of blaring crimson and added cheerful dots of burbling green, chain clanging orange and tinkling violet. Baja painted and painted into the colors went quiet. Look what I made, shouted Baja. Is it a house? asked Auntie. Is it a flower? asked Mama. What's it supposed to be? asked Papa. It's music, said Baja, waltzing his painting around the house. Calm down, said Mama. Do some math, said Papa. Heaven, said Auntie. This boy needs a proper art class. He didn't paint what people were expected to paint at that time. He didn't paint houses and flowers and portraits of people. He painted what he saw in his mind. Um, the colors, the musical colors. So later on, he did take those art classes and he learned how to paint like a proper artist, pictures of houses and landscapes and people, but he wasn't happy. He was, was even a lawyer for a time didn't make him happy either. So finally, 
he did go back to art and he talked to his artist friends and they thought that art needed to change. Art should make you feel, Vasha told them, like music. So he wanted to paint something to make you feel something, not just an image of something that you would see in everyday life. Exactly, said, he fr said his friends, but none of them knew how to paint feelings until the day Vasha grew brave enough and invited the world to see the paintings roaring from his noisy paint box. Completely different from what was expected. So with his noisy paint box, Vaja Kandinsky created something entirely new, abstract art. It took a long time for people to understand. Is it a house? Is it a flower? What's it supposed to be? It's my art, Vaja answered. How does it make you feel? So that's what we're talking about today, abstract art. I'm going to show you with you some of his pictures. He's painting to make you feel something, not just look at something. So, some of his pictures. There's one, and it's simply called Circles in a Circle. This is 1923, and you can see there are lots of circles, lots of bright colors, lots of mixing colors, lines, but it doesn't look exactly like a flower or a building or a person, but it's abstract. Okay, and here is another one. This is called composition number eight. They named a lot of his um, paintings after musical terms. And it looks like music to me. You can see the notes on the page. It looks like various instruments playing just how it makes you feel, just looking at it, it's almost musical. And then we have this one. This is what we're gonna work with today, because circles. Kandinsky did a lot of experimenting with color and shape. And if you look at some of these circles, you can look at colors that are similar in scale, orange and red, analogous colors on a color wheel, they kind of blend together, but then you see other colors that really kind of stand out, like the blues and the reds and oranges, because there are um, opposites on the color wheel. So they make it vibrate a little bit more. So you can play with colors when we do our circles to see how things blend together or stand out. And a lot of it has to do with the color wheel. Show the color wheel. We have complementary colors. The colors that are opposites like blue and orange, red and red and green, purple and yellow. They're opposites on the color wheel. They kind of vibrate against each other and make each other stand out. Kind of like my shirt, if you see the bright blues, kind of stand out really sharply against the orange. Those are complementary colors. So what are we gonna do with those today? We're gonna make something like this. You can play around with your circles and see how they look next to each other. See how the red and orange kind of blend together? They're kind of analogous on that color wheel. That means they're kind of next to each other. Reds and oranges next to each other. Or we have things like the red and green that makes the green really pop off the circle when it's next to the red. So those are complementary colors. So what you can do is look at the materials in your bag and your instructions. Of course, and there's a picture of the circles in square. And we have a whole lot of circles and some background paper. Lots of circles. And of course, a glue stick to put them all together. And then the wiki sticks are just for fun, or you can make circles and put those in your composition too, or straight lines if you want to glue those into your composition. So what you can do, you can do a picture like the circles, or if you want to feel really abstract, put on some music and see what comes to your mind and give your portrait or your picture, give your picture some lines and some circles and see what kind of composition you can make. But today we're just going to make circles. So take one of your pictures 
on your pieces of paper to make your picture. I'm going to use red. If you fold it in half this way, and then fold it into thirds, I'm going to guess if you kind of bend it a little bit, you can make them a little bit even. So you have about thirds, three pieces. And if you open it up, then you will have six squares. One, two, three, four, five, six, just like this one. Another way to keep your squares separate from your circle. Then take your colors and play with them. See how they look when you layer them. Do you want them to stand out? Complementary colors. Yeah, blue and orange really stand out. Complementary. Or, let's see, the red and the green. Also complementary. Almost vibrates when you have two really complementary colors. Or, you can make them kind of blend in. Orange on red kind of blends a little bit. yellow and orange versus let's see blue and orange blends a little more stands out a little bit more so you want to layer your circles whatever colors you want to use I'm not going to reduce the red one because that really blends in with the red and layer them Try different combinations. See what stands out to you and how you want to arrange them. So after you play with your circles, then you just glue them down. Glue them together, glue them to your paper. And then with whatever you have left over, you have some other dots. You have some lines with a wicky stick. A lot of more circles. Put them together in another kind of composition or another kind of arrangement. Uh, however you want to put them together and glue them down and then send us a copy of what you've made so we have our email address on here you can send us a picture a lot of you have been doing that and we really are enjoying seeing those uh, send us a picture uh, tell us that we can use it in our art show which we're going to try to get together by the end of this month so you can see what everybody's been doing uh, after their art classes and their fairy tale challenges. So there has been a lot of really cool stuff. So play around with it, have fun, send us a picture, and we'll see you next time, next week, when we talk about Ask the Owl.